Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Melissa. I am a registered dietitian. If you did not know, now you know. Um, today we are talking about something that I feel like is becoming increasingly popular and that is intermittent fasting. So if you haven't been to my channel before, I have lots of, lots, I have a series of videos about fad diets where I just kind of dive into where they come from, what's the research behind them, kind of the good and the bad, and would I recommend that you do them? So that is what we are doing today with intermittent fasting. So let's uh, first dive into the history of intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting actually has a pretty rich history. It's been around for like basically all of time. Humans have been fasting forever. You know, if you think back to hunter-gatherer days, they were fasting when they were in a famine, when they couldn't get any food. They would go days without eating or they would ration their food to eat just a very small amount every day until they could get a larger feast. There's also a bunch of religions that also utilize fasting. So um, fasting really has kind of been around forever. So I really wasn't able to find or pinpoint like a specific scientist or person that really made intermittent fasting popular for weight loss or like kind of a trendy fad diet. I couldn't really figure out how that happened. So when I say intermittent fasting, a lot of you probably know what I mean, but if you don't know what I mean, um, intermittent fasting is basically different types of fasting and there are several different types which I am going to go over now. So the first kind is called a periodic fast. So this is where you fast for a 24 hour period and you are recommended to do this one to two times a week. I think most people recommend doing it every three to five days. So you'll have a day of fasting and then you'll have a couple days of eating normally, day of fasting, a couple days of eating normally. The next kind is time restricted fasting and I feel like this is the one that I have been hearing about most often lately. I feel like before it was the periodic fasting and now I feel like the time restricted fasting is more popular. So this is basically where you eat all your meals in a certain amount of hours in the day. So it's normally like a 16 to 18 hour fast. So like for a 16 hour fast, you would eat all of your meals in an eight hour period during the day. You can also do 18 hours and have it an even smaller chunk of time. And I think honestly, this is probably the most popular kind of fasting because it does involve the least amount of restriction. I mean, most of us are fasting for 10 to 12 hours anyways overnight. So you're just kind of expanding that fasting window and decreasing the amount of time during the day that you're eating. I also found one kind of fast called the warrior diet, which is where you eat all of your calories for the day in one single meal. I don't think that's particularly popular, but it is out there. And then alternate day fasting is pretty similar to the periodic fast where you are doing 24 hours of eating normally and then 24 hours of fasting. And normally that doesn't mean you're not eating anything. Um, it's just a very restricted calorie diet for that day. So it's normally about 500 calories for those fasting days. So those are the most common types of fasts that I found um, and all of those are considered intermittent fasting. So let's talk about the claims of intermittent fasting. Why did this become a fad diet? What do people think this diet is going to do for them? So firstly, it claims to help you lose weight, um, which is probably the biggest reason why it's a fad diet. <laughs> it can also alter hormone function, cell function, and gene expression. So for example, it can increase your human growth hormone, um, decrease the amount of insulin in your blood, and increase uh, cell repair. It can help reduce insulin resistance, reduces oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. It may help reduce the risk of cancer as well as the risk of Alzheimer's. It is good for your brain health. And then finally, it can help expand your life. It can help you live longer. Who doesn't want that? So those are all some pretty hefty claims. So let's jump into the science behind this diet. In terms of fad diets, this is definitely one that is probably the most backed by science of all of the ones out there. So I'm not gonna go into everything or else we would be here forever. So I'm just gonna kind of cover some of the interesting ones, interesting studies and results that I found. So there are actually a lot of studies showing 
that intermittent fasting does help with weight loss. A couple studies also showed that compared to um, just regular calorie restriction, intermittent fasting did help you retain more muscle as you were losing weight, and it also helped reduce things like cholesterol and blood sugar as you were losing weight rather than just losing weight and none of those things changing. Um, however, there really aren't any long-term studies about the effects of fasting long term and the effects of you know fasting to lose weight and then going back to regular eating. I wasn't able to find anything about that um, in terms of weight gain after fasting. There's a lot of animal studies that show that intermittent fasting can cause the development of more proteins that help protect the brain and protect and repair your DNA. So they think the mechanism behind this is that Fasting creates kind of a stress on your body, and so it makes your cells stronger because they're used to being under stress. So it makes them um, a little more resistant and able to repair themselves. And also, in terms of brain health, this fasting has a similar effect to the ketogenic diet, where when you are fasting, your body uses up its glucose stores and switches to using fat for fuel, which for a lot of people is good for the brain. One that I thought was really interesting is there was one animal study that showed after a four month period of inter or after a four month study, um, mice who were in the intermittent fasting group versus the control group had a lower percentage of white fat and a higher percentage of brown fat. So um, I talked about this a little bit in my Secret Life of Fat video, which if you haven't watched it, watch it. But Basically, white fat stores excessive nutrients and can multiply and all these things, whereas brown fat actually helps to burn other fat. So ideally you want more brown fat than white fat. And according to this study, in mice anyways, intermittent fasting helped to reduce white fat and increase brown fat, so therefore increase fat burning. There are quite a few studies showing that it lowers insulin levels and helps with insulin resistance, so lowering insulin levels increases fat burning. One study actually showed a 3 to 6 percent decrease in blood sugar and a 20 to 31 percent decrease in fasting insulin, so that's pretty cool. A few studies have also showed a decrease in things like LDL cholesterol, um, blood pressure, and just overall inflammatory markers in the body. But again, this a lot of these are animal studies, so they can't necessarily be used to tell us what will happen in humans. I think the notion that intermittent fasting could reduce risk of cancer is really interesting. Obviously, everyone wants to reduce their risk of cancer, um, but there really just isn't enough studies right now to show one way or the other. There are some studies showing that intermittent fasting can actually increase the effects of chemo. Cancer is basically uncontrollable cell growth, and by fasting and putting those cells under stress, you can decrease the growth of those cells, supposedly. But there's also some studies showing that it decreases the effects of chemo, so we just really don't know at this point. And again, there was one study that I found that showed intermittent fasting could decrease the symptoms of Alzheimer's. So actually in the study, nine out of 10 people had a decrease in their symptoms of Alzheimer's from intermittent fasting. But again, that's one study. So that's just a few of the studies that I looked at and that I found. Like I said, there's still a lot of research to be done. Most of these are on animals, so we can't necessarily use them to show what will work for humans. Um, most of them are short term. All in all, there is really a lot of research backing this diet and its benefits. However, we still can't really say. There's so much more research that needs to be done. So let's talk about the good and the bad. So first, let's talk about the good things about this diet. Like I said, and like you've heard, there's lots of science to back it. And while there's not necessarily like a solid answer, a lot of it is really promising. So I do think, you know, I would, I feel more confident in the science behind this than the science behind the Whole30 diet, if you know what I mean. Another good thing about it is that 
many people feel like it gives them a little more freedom. You know, you don't have to count your calories or carbs or um, any of that sort of thing. They feel like they can just kind of eat whatever they want as long as it's in that time period. And for a lot of people, that's really appealing. And, you know, if someone is trying to lose weight and maybe cal counting calories just isn't working for them, uh, that intermittent fasting could be something that would be really appealing to them. Is it a video if Brody doesn't do that? Another thing that I like about it is there's not necessarily only one way to do it. Since there are different types of fasts, you can kind of experiment and find out what works best for you. I don't think that there's one diet that fits everyone and these diets that have such a such specific sets of rules don't work for a lot of people. So I think a diet that has, you know, a few different ways of doing it based on your schedule and what works for you, I think people could be a lot more successful doing that. Now let's talk about the bad. One thing is that there have been oh. There have been a couple studies showing that it can slow your metabolism. So, you know, just like eating too few calories over a period of time can slow your metabolism, not eating anything for a long period of time can slow your metabolism too. And that's obviously not what we want <laughs> if you're trying to lose weight. I also think this diet would not at all be suitable for people with any type of disordered eating because I do think even if you don't have disordered eating. I think it really could cause some binge eating. You know, if you are not eating for 16 to 18 hours, you're probably going to be really hungry. And there are a lot of studies that show that hunger doesn't necessarily decrease the longer that you do intermittent fasting. So by the time you get to that small period of time in your day, you are, I mean, it's, it's certainly possible that you're gonna be so hungry that you might binge. And another thing is, like a lot of diets, if you do have disordered eating, I mean, this can be a cover-up for that. You know, this is an excuse to skip meals and to not eat for long periods of time, which I don't necessarily think that we should be encouraging. Um, again, like I said, there's really not any long-term studies of A, how this works long-term, and B, what happens after you stop intermittent fasting. For these people who lost weight intermittent fasting, do they regain the weight? There's really not any studies that show that. Also, something that you don't see in, that I really didn't see in these studies is that this can not be great for women. Women's hormones are very sensitive to energy intake and they're really reliant on um, regular energy intake and when you're not getting that your hormones can get out of whack really quickly and actually a lot of women who try intermittent fasting lose their period which is not a good thing. It might sound appealing, but um, having a regular cycle is really important. So something that can cause that is not necessarily something I would recommend. And then my final kind of qualm with it is that while it seems freeing to be able to eat whatever you want in that period of time, I honestly feel like it can be just as restricting another diet. You know, think about, think about your schedule. Like me, for example, my schedule is not the same every day. There's days when I have to wake up at five in the morning and then there's days when I don't get home until 7.30 or 8 p.m. So what does that fast look like for me? You know, if, if I'm eating from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., there's gonna be days when I'm awake for hours and hours before I can eat anything. And then there's gonna be days where I'm not gonna be able to eat dinner because I don't get home in time and then I can't eat. Same goes for, you know, what if you want to go out for a meal with your friends? Most of them probably aren't gonna wanna go out to eat at five o'clock at night. Same with like the weekends. You know, what if you wanna go out for a drink? Go out for, you know, some bar food or something. That is definitely not gonna be part of this plan. So while it does sound freeing to begin with, I do think it's a lot more restrictive than, than you realize until you really start thinking about how that will fit in your everyday life. So let's wrap it up. So in conclusion, 
would I recommend intermittent fasting? Um, I do think that intermittent fasting of all the fad diets out there probably has the most science to back it up. And I, as well as probably most dietitians, health professionals can really appreciate and respect that. Like I've said many times, I do think that there needs to be more studies done, more human studies, more long-term studies. But in terms of fad diets, I do think it's one of the more re reputable ones out there. I definitely think it's not for everyone. Um, if you have any type of disordered eating, I would certainly not recommend it. If, I mean, women, I would be very cautious about it. And, you know, if someone came to me asking if they should do it, I don't know that I would necessarily um, advise them against it like I would with most fad diets, because um, I, do, I do think there's something there. I'd recommend going into it with caution. I would recommend making sure you are planning, seeing what your day looks like with that fast and being very cautious of what is happening with your body when you're doing that fast. You know, you need to be willing to be very aware of if you are binging, if you are getting enough food, if you're a woman, are your hormones getting out of whack? Um, so just kind of being very aware when you are doing it, approaching it cautiously. Okay, I think that is all I have for today. I know that was a lot of information. Believe me, there's so much more information, so I hope I was able to condense this enough while still being informative. I hope that you learned something. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you've tried intermittent fasting, what you thought of it. Uh, if you're a dietitian, what you think of intermittent fasting. Yeah, let me know if there's any other fad diets you would like me to talk about as well. And yeah, I think that's all that I have for today. Like I said, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you next week. Bye.